The crew is finally reunited, but under the worst circumstances. How will they get out of the shipping container? What's really going on in Terminus? Can Carol and Tyrese save our heroes? Let's find out how they get out of this one. I'm Ian Start. And I'm Brian Mitchell. And this is the Skybound Rundown. With Rick and the gang at a standstill, they've made some progress in weapon fashioning. Time to buckle down. Rick, Glenn, Bob, and Daryl are taken and laid to slaughter like pigs. Hey! Enter Gareth, the leader of Terminus and overall piece of shit. Just as our gang is about to be cut, an explosion rattles the town! Could it be? Melissa fucking McBride. She explodes a gas tank allowing hundreds of walkers to pour in, which also lets Rick go ape shit to free his crew. Meanwhile, Tyrese body slams his prisoner and escapes the hideout with Judith, which allows for Rick's 10th heartwarming reunion. The gang is back in the wilderness, and as they seek refuge, they run into a helpless priest who takes them into his church. Jesus Christ! This man of God doesn't seem to be everything he lets on, but they need shelter, so they set up shop. Rick takes the priest with them on a supply run, and he cowers from the water walkers. Aquatic zombies? Yeesh. Looks like everyone's okay, and it's time to head back. Later that night, Bob steps into the graveyard with a gun, and is captured by shithead Gareth. <sighs> Bob wakes up to Gareth and his posse as they are <gasps> eating his leg. But what they don't know is, I've been bitten, you stupid prick. Didn't mean to spoil your dinner. <laughs> Turns out the priest left a bunch of people to die outside his church, and the crew realizes Gareth has come back for revenge. But Rick's dead set on re-revenge. Just as things are about to go down, <laughs> ultra badass Rick emerges from the shadows, silent but deadly. The gang is safe, but they've lost one Bob. Time to hop on a bus and get the hell out of Dodge as most of the crew leaves with Abraham, but Rick and some of the others stay behind to wait for Daryl and Carol. Beth is awake! And in a hospital? A doctor and cop tell her that she was found on the side of the road. And after chopping off some arms and dumping some bodies, Beth meets Noah, a nice boy who wants to escape the hospital. Ah, another blooming friendship. I'm sure this will end well. Beth is then duped by the people of the hospital, but she's had enough. It's time for her and Noah to leave. Go on, do it, Beth. As they get to the exit, no one makes it through the gates, but Beth, not so much. La la la. Abraham and the others are cruising down the road. <laughs> After they shake themselves off, they find a library. That seems fitting. The next morning, they find a fire truck full of water, but instead of drinking it, they destroy some corpses. Once it's up and running, they get to a stopping point of thousands of walkers. Before they're about to risk all of their lives, Eugene has a confession to make. I'm not a scientist. Who'd have thought? And Abraham doesn't take it so well. <laughs> Daryl and Carol continue to follow the mysterious Dodge in search of Beth. Official car of the apocalypse, eh? They move safely through the buildings of Atlanta until they're robbed of their weapons by our man Noah. Come on, Noah. You got some sack on you. The two continue on and investigate a van with the same white cross as the car that took Beth. Surrounded by walkers, the van teeters off the side of the overpass. Have a nice trip. See you next fall. They push forward, searching more buildings until they once again run into Noah. And then Carol runs into a car! With Carol captured, Daryl and Noah head back to the church. With the help of Tyrese, Rick and the group decide to capture two of their people in exchange for Beth and Carol. Give peace a chance, Rick. Until one of the hostages hits Sasha and escapes. Shit. Beth fights to make sure Carol is taken care of at the hospital at all costs. Back at the church, Michonne and Carl hold it down while Father Gabriel crawls away. He escaped hostages on the run, but Rick's on his tail. And then Rick crushes the shit out of his tail. Oh, shit! And shoots him in the head. Hey, talk about a fender bender. Time to make a trade. Rick meets with the other officers from the hospital to set it up. Once they meet face to face, Beth stabs Don with a pair of scissors, who then shoots Beth in the head. <gasps> Goodbye, Beth. After Daryl takes care of Don, the two groups part with their ends of the deal. Back with the others, Father Gabriel fucks everything up and leads the walkers to the church. But Abraham saves the day and the crew reunites as Maggie breaks down. Time to head to Virginia, where Noah believes his town and family are still alive. Oh, sweet, naive Noah. Of course, everyone's dead. And while searching Noah's home, Tyrese is bit. Two in a row? After many hallucinations, Tyrese accepts his fate and ultimately dies as the man he wanted to be. Shit's getting way too real for the gang as they recoup following their losses, even Daryl. But then they receive a mysterious liquid gift. You mean water? Yep, in the form of bottles and a rainstorm. 
After collecting as much as they can, they spend the night in a small barn. The next morning following the storm, they discover that lightning hit right outside of the barn, killing a bunch of walkers. It's a miracle! As Sasha and Maggie watch the sunrise, Good morning. Who's this dude? Maggie and Sasha bring their new friend, Aaron, into the barn to meet the others. He's getting pretty good at that. Rick is suspicious of Aaron's proposition to take them all back to his sweet little town. But Michonne insists on investigating before making a decision. As the others leave to find the car, as Aaron mentioned, Rick stays watch and gets some delicious applesauce. Nom, 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 nom. Aaron was telling the truth. Hooray! The gang comes back and gets Rick, and they head off to Alexandria. Brought dinner. The gates are opened, and our crew is welcomed. Aaron introduces the team to Deanna, who sees them becoming a vital means of survival for Alexandria, and everyone gets settled in. Ah! But after Glenn's weird run with Aiden and Nicholas, Rick and his council seem skeptical of the group's blindness to the horrors of the outside world. If they can't make it, then we'll just take this place. Rick's got his eyes on a pretty little lady named Jessie, but he doesn't lose focus. Carol, Rick, and Daryl meet in secret about a fallback plan, just in case this community doesn't pan out. Carol devises a plan to steal handguns from the armory and hide them, following a cute little horsey. Oh, Jesus. Moment of silence for this little horsey. Aaron enlists Daryl to help search for new people to join the community. He accepts. <laughs> Party time, party time, party time! The community welcomes the newcomers with cheese and wine. Perfect chance for Carol to steal from them. She passes the guns out to Rick, but Daryl doesn't accept. He's trying to make this work, along with Michonne, who hangs up the old katana. Aiden, Glenn, Tara, Eugene, Nicholas, and Noah head out on a run for parts to get the power grid back up. They listen to some tunes along the way. Now you're going to die. But the run doesn't go so well. Aiden shoots a grenade on accident, killing himself and injuring Tara. Eugene carries Tara to safety. Nicholas, Glenn, and Noah find themselves trapped in a revolving door, and Nicholas gives zero fucks. Nicholas, you fool! Gabriel goes fucking crazy and tells Deanna that the group can't be trusted, and Maggie overhears him. And Carol finds out that Jesse's husband, Pete, has been beating Jesse. Time for Rick to serve some justice. Meanwhile, Sasha goes on a killing spree, and Michonne and Rosita track her down. Carl begins to get some warm, tingly feelings for Enid. You're a man, Carl. And Daryl and Aaron find another little walker with another little W on its forehead. I wonder what that means. Rick proposes a solution to Deanna. Let's just kill Pete, whatever. She wants no part of it. Rick then tells Jesse that he knows, and tells her that he can fix it. Then dumb old Pete walks in, and it's time for another battle royale. Rick comes out the winner and goes on a rant about the group's naivety. I'm not gonna stand by. I Morgan! He's alive and well, and beats up a couple of W heads who try to rob him. Oh no! Aaron and Daryl get caught in a walker booby trap and are surrounded. But have no fear, Morgan is here. He saves the duo, and they head back to Alexandria, where a meeting has been called by Deanna to address Rick Grimes and possibly kicking him out of the community. Nearby, Nicholas leads Glenn out to the woods and... Rat bastard! But Glenn puts an end to his shenanigans. He doesn't kill him, though. Gabriel, in a crazed state, leaves the front gate open, and walkers get in. Rick notices and goes out to save the day. The meeting begins, and as the group seems to be swinging in Deanna's favor, Rick arrives with a dead walker. The group can't hide from the world any longer. Luck runs out. Suddenly, Pete walks in with Michonne's katana, and in a blind rage, slices the neck of Deanna's husband, Reg. Reg, no! Deanna has made up her mind. Do it. Rick demolishes Pete's brains, and Morgan sees it all. Dun, dun, dun. Is Rick the crazy one now? Where did Morgan get that branch? Will Rick and Jesse start getting it? Will the paradise of Alexandria survive hell on Earth? Rick sure has some work to do. And we'll see it all unfold in next week's Season 6 recap of AMC's The Walking Dead. And with Season 7 premiering just around the corner, you won't want to miss this one. Subscribe to our channel and like and comment on the video below. Thanks for tuning in, guys.